All right, YouTubers. Um, I'm gonna do a video today. I'm gonna be servicing my bearings. I'm gonna be changing them out, races, putting grease in there, changing them out, doing the hubs on the bearings for my trailer, and then also the hubs with the brakes. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first things first, I got the trailer hooked up to my vehicle. That's the safest way to do it. You can use a block of wood or I'm using the uh, trailer aid. And I have a tandem axle trailer, so basically it's gonna lift the opposing wheel. So if I drive up on it with this wheel, it'll lift that one in the air. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and while the wheel is on the ground, I'm going to loosen up the lug nuts while it's on the ground. And then uh, I'll be pulling this thing up onto the trailer aid. have a spotter so it's kind of doing it blindly but uh, there it is it's on the trailer aid I use this as a stopper so I don't overshoot it I can remove that now and uh, you can see the tire is off the ground okay so next step is uh, <clears throat> I'm going to um, while the tire is bolted on still I'm gonna go ahead and remove this dust cap and then we're gonna take the tire off and get it done. Yeah, piece of cake. Comes right off. We're gonna put this on the side. Okay, and then we've got a lot of grease over here, so we're gonna have to end up uh, wiping that off, cleaning it up. Um, first things first though, let's take off this tire. On this boat, I have stainless steel hubs on the back and I have stainless steel calipers with a Dacker mat coated brake set on the front. So th this rear set is only hubs. Unfortunately, when I had the brakes installed, they put in new cotter pins and the cotter pins they used are humongous. They're, um, the thicker size one compared to the ones that I have that I'm gonna that I'm gonna so these things are a pain in the butt to remove and you're gonna see what I'm talking about um, so first things first is here's the cotter pin and there's the pin there. so there's our cotter pin so Using a flathead screwdriver, you're going to kind of bend it out. Try to pry it away. Well, you know what? This looks like this might be the thinner cotter pin. I might be in luck. The other wheel, they had the thick one on there and it was a nightmare when I'd had to redo that one. Ugh, straight up nightmare. This one looks a lot easier. Knock on wood. So you're trying to straighten out so you can pull it out a little easier. You can use a combination of some pliers, dikes, screwdriver and a hammer to get this thing straight. Just be careful you don't stab yourself like how I, how I did. Okay, you know, this is the thinner cotter pin, so this might work. Okay, so we're gonna 
grab this guy. Okay. It's a little tight, so I'm gonna my plot wrench straighter. Try to straighten that out, I don't know if you can see that. Sometimes these things are so stuck in there, you gotta punch them out with a punch. Which is what I had to do on my last one, but that was partly because the people who installed my brakes, when they installed it, they used the thickest cotter pin they could possibly use. Oh, what a nightmare that was. Hold this and pound it out. Flatten that down. Okay, try to do that again. Repeat the process. Things are a lot of guys. Oh shit! Don't do that. A lot of guys. Uh, they just usually snip these things and. Tap it out. You can see what a pain this is. I think the cotter pin is harder to remove than anything else on this. It's coming out. Almost there. When you, um, see, <clears throat> I'm just going to be, you know, a lot of guys, they say once a year, inspect your hubs, bearings, races, but if I got to go and take all this stuff off, I'm just going to change them out, you know what I mean? I think it's like 20 something bucks a wheel, so I'm just going to change it out, that's just me, I'm not going to go and inspect them, grease them and put a old one back in just change it out same thing with the cotter pin those things get destroyed so we're just going to get rid of that okay. so one thing we want to look at is tire wear you want to make sure your tire wear is even you know it's not going from fat to thin this one is pretty even so a lot of times it'll be thin on one side and high on the other and that tells you you've got sort of a um, issue and more likely with your bearings. So we're gonna put this tire on the side because we're gonna use it. So because I have stainless hub 
hubs and my wheels are galvanized, you get a lot of this kind of powdery corrosion over here. So what you want to do is when you take this off, clean this up, put a little bit of grease on there. Because when the galvanized and stainless meet, you know, there's a little bit of this powdery corrosion. What that is, is that's the galvanized rim sort of kind of powdering away. Okay. Now that we've got the uh, cotter pin off, let's take off the castle nut. Okay. Castle nut. It's coming out. Go ahead and clean this off. Um, it's a good idea to set up a pad, a puppy pad, some newspaper, so you can put all your parts down on it. You don't lose anything. So there should be a washer right there. So that washer is going to fall right out once we let's remove this. And that's the front bearing. So you want to save the washer. You're going to reuse the washer unless there's damage, in which case you'd replace it. It's a good idea to have a lot of rags and paper towels while you're doing this. And I carry a trash bag with me, so I just throw everything in the trash bag. I don't have to worry about the getting grease on the ground. So there's our washer. I'm going to go with some cleaner and wipe that up after. Same thing with the castle nut. This is the, uh, the old uh, outer bearing. I'm not even going to bother inspecting this. Um, I honestly feel the bearings and everything have been all good, but it's been about a year and a half, and uh, I want to change my bearings out. Something I want to do about annually, so... But this is the outer bearing. Uh, like I said, if I'm going to go into this thing and remove all this stuff to inspect it, it's just, you might as well just change it, you know? So anyway, occasionally what I'll do is if the bearings and races aren't damaged from removal, which they normally are, especially the races, uh, from when you're trying to pound the thing out, I may save a set for like a spare set to build a spare hub. So when I trailer... When I go to the boat ramp, I usually carry a spare hub with me. So in case there's a blowout, uh, if my hub blows out, bearings give out or whatever, I can take the tire off and just change the new hub. Because in reality, on the side of the road, I'm not going to be pressing in, you know, uh, races and seals and stuff like that on the side of the road. I mean, you're going to have to hold, have a whole bunch of stuff with you to do it. And um, it's kind of a pain in the butt on the side of the road. So it's much easier and cheaper and uh, way less headache to just carry a spare hub with you. Okay, so now that we got that off. So I can already tell that um, I had a slight seal failure. Um, for one, we've got a little piece of metal here um, that was probably riding up against the spindle. And then if you look at the seal, it looks uh, pretty slaughtered. You can see some excess grease that kind of spilled out. Um, yeah, so we're going to clean this up. And what you want to do is, I should be wearing gloves. I'm going to wipe the excess grease off with paper towel or rag. And then I'm going to... Put some cleaner on it and just clean off any extra residual grease and gunk that's on there. And when you look at your spindle, just make sure there's no gouge marks, that it looks clean. Um, scrape marks, you know, damage. You're looking for damage. It should feel smooth. It should look smooth. And I'll give you a little close-up here. So 
So uh, it looks pretty clean. I don't see any chunks scratching. I don't see any scratches, gouges, anything like that. So it's pretty good. Okay. I'm gonna put some gloves on because this is gonna get dirty. Generally, when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, you don't want to mix old, dirty grease with your new stuff. So change your gloves when you're putting on the new grease. Use different rags or wipes or towels when you're cleaning the old versus new that are putting, taking off old versus putting on new. Okay, so um, wipe that off. I'm gonna put a cleaner on it and, and wipe it and let it dry. But uh, first things first, we're gonna address this guy, the hub. This is the stainless hub, it's a Kodiak hub. So we're gonna get some paper towels, we're gonna clean it off so we can see what we're doing. We'll clean all this off after. I don't see um, a lot of water intrusion or anything. I think just the seal was starting to wear, that's all. A lot of grease in there. Stick your paper towel in there and get it all out. To be honest, when I do all four tires, I think I go through about two rolls of paper towels or a box of rags. Okay, I'm gonna show you the easy way to get these things out. It's called a punch and a tire. Okay, there's a lot of grease in there. Which is a good thing, because you don't want to see no grease. You want to see lots of clean grease. If you see like there's different grease like colors like let's say you use a white grease and all of a sudden you see like red or brown in there that means you might have water intrusion and there might be some rust or something going on. Okay that's the rear seal and we gotta take that out. That's the first thing we're gonna do is take that out. I'll show you how to do it or how I do it. So use your old tire. Tire you just took off. Okay, and we're gonna put that down like that. Yeah, we're gonna tap that thing out. Okay, where's my hammer? So I'm just basically gonna take a punch, chisel, whatever you want. You know, I got a punch. I'm gonna use a punch. Um, and you're just going to. We're not reusing the bearings, so I'm going to be punching down, punching down that bearing, that inner bearing down, and it's going to hit the seal, and it's going to push that seal out. And good, uh, good idea to wear some eye protection. A lot of times, stuff breaks and it goes flying at you. So I got my eye protection on. There we go. Piece of cake. That's the easiest way to do it. I've tried the screwdriver method. I tried wedging it. By far, that's the easiest. So this is our old seal. It's pretty. It's pretty worn out and pretty bust. You can see the rubber's been all bust. The spring, the retention spring is. Uh, you know, the bearing itself, I think, is going to be good. I don't see a whole lot of damage to it. There's no rust at all. But we're not reusing this stuff, so I don't care about this. But that's what those parts are. Throw that away. Okay, we're gonna do some more cleaning. And we're gonna do some punching. We're gonna get this excess grease out that we just... So right now what's left in here is our races, inner and outer races, or they call them the cups. This is what the bearing sits on and rides around on. It's kind of sub conical sort of cups. Okay. At least I can see what I'm doing. Okay. No, we 
easier tire right here and that's why this old that's why you do it this way it's easier it holds it and it allows the so same thing i'm gonna use the punch and basically gonna put the punch down on the lip of the race and we're gonna punch it out so right on the lip and you're gonna go kind of clockwise went all the way around getting all the edges you gotta kind of hit this thing because it's pressed in there this is where you need your eye protection Ooh, slipped with the grease and you'll see it start to work itself down I can see it already it's it's going down Try not to, a lot of guys, they use uh, screwdrivers. I don't like screwdrivers because um, if you're not careful, the flathead screwdriver can kind of gouge away at the inside of the hub. And so I like a punch because it's nice and round and smooth. fall out there you go okay so that's one race out the cup let me see what it looks like that's what it looks like as you can see it's all smooth inside so i honestly i think my bearings and everything with my bearings and everything was all good the grease was all good i think it was just the seal was starting to go bad okay okay now we're gonna do the other side so this I'm gonna use I don't want to, I'm gonna be doing a lot of pounding so I don't want to pound too much on the rim and the tire because this one is actually fatter so we're gonna use a piece of wood right there that way we don't damage the face of this thing okay all right tap that guy out about to come out there we go that was a lot easier and so that is the other race and you can see it's pretty clean there's no scratching damage rust it's only about a year and a half old but like I said I think generally people should inspect their bearings once a year but if I'm gonna go in inspect these and pull these things out and pound them out i'm just going to change them i'm not going to stick the old ones in that might possibly have damage I mean, you can see you'll save yourself some money but these things don't cost much per set especially if you get like the cheaper chinese stuff the, I, the ones i'm using is uh, the name brand ones it's called timkin it's the more expensive ones but you know what an extra 10 15 bucks on the road peace of mind better quality is well worth it so i'm going to finish cleaning this out i'm going to spray some cleaner in here inspect it um, right now i'm looking at the inside and i don't see um too much stuff going on uh, let's see here it looks pretty looks pretty clean and smooth and undamaged so that's a good sign everything looks good so i'm gonna go ahead and clean this all up with some cleaner and wipes. I don't think you need to see that. Uh, and then we're gonna reinstall everything. Okay, so my trailer, it's a tapered um, spindle. It's like a 30, I think about 3,700 pound um, axle. So for my trailer, um, I use, uh, I'm, this is the parts I use. This Timken set, let's see here. This is race and bearing, so if you can see that. L68111 
L68149. So those two part numbers correspond with the bearing and race. Let me take this out. So here's your bearing and here's your race that it sits on, okay? So that's... And then because it's tapered, the other one is a little smaller. And that number is right here. L44649 and L44610. So that's for mine. And it's tapered, so this is a little bit different size. So you gotta make sure you know. If you don't know, you just take your hub down to your trailer parts store and they can um, get the right size for you. Okay, so we're gonna install the races and then we're gonna pack the bearings. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is the rear, the rear um, race. And you always want to do it with the the side where it's got all the, the numbers and the part number and all that, the fat side, that's going to go towards the center. So it, that's how the bearings fit. They're tapered like a cone and it goes towards the center. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this guy in. Should be nice and clean. I don't see any debris or anything. All the old grease is gone. I went ahead and got some degreaser and cleaned it out with some mineral spirits and some rags. Okay, so we're gonna drop this in. This is the this is the inside part. So this is the part that's gonna go in like that, okay? Okay, so we're going to put that bugger on. So for this, I have a driver set that I use. And it comes with all different types of drivers. Um, so, this is what it looks like. These, there's different sizes. You just, it's got a big pin you can pound on, you slap it on. So it's a whole kit. I think mine's is like a 52 piece, but uh, they sell smaller ones um, online. If you do this yourself, it's worth it. You can also use a socket or a pipe or something to fit in there. As long as you got the fitment right, it's not too big. But basically, it's gonna it's gonna go in there and pound that thing down in there. <sighs> okay. Just make sure you got it the right size so it's going in. Okay, so make sure this thing is nice and level. I've got it on the block of wood so I don't bust up the. Um, hub on the concrete and you just pound away this thing takes some wax to get it in almost in there and you can kind of see so i got about an eighth, eighth of an inch or so and it'll, it'll kind of bottom out and it'll sound kind of like a thud when you get down there yeah right there come in it stuck yeah perfect let's give it a tap there we go and just check make sure you're seated evenly so make sure that thing is in there nice and flush you don't see an uneven gap and there should be there's like a little lip here that that race will hit up against so make sure when you're looking at this thing you can make sure that you're up against that lip which you, I am so that's good Okay, so that's the inner race. So now we're gonna put the bearing in, but before we do that, we're gonna lube it. So let me get some clean gloves because we're putting on clean grease. We don't wanna contaminate it with the old stuff. Okay, so clean gloves for clean, clean grease. I don't have a, um, what do they call those things? A bearing greaser or what they call it, the thing that you push down. I just do it by hand. To me, this seems to be the best way, but I'm um, just going to take your grease, same grease that you're going to lube your spindle and everything with. Okay. Pump some onto the palm of your hand. Get that grass out of here. I'm going to end up needing more, but let's just use that for now. Okay, you're going to get your bearing that's going to go in like that. 
okay and then you're gonna rake it till it comes out the other side okay so you're gonna see it start to come out on this lip here it's gonna push through you can see how it's kind of pushing through there in the top you can do that all the way around you see how it's all pushing through all the way around what you're doing is you're forcing the grease through the little rollers making sure it's greased everywhere I like to do it about twice all the way around just to make sure I really scraped it up. Okay, so I've got the grease all the way on the inside now. It's got pushed through. Put a little bit of grease on my finger here, right there. We're gonna put our bearing in. Okay, a little Timken bearing. And these things only go one way. You try and put it the other way, it's not gonna go. So it always goes like towards the center. Okay. Now we're gonna put our seal on. So let me get that. Okay, so for the seal, I like to put some. I like to put some grease on the axle where it's gonna ride. up the axle right now okay and then put some grease on the lip there and I'm gonna clean up Okay, and then this thing's gonna get tapped in and then I do have a I do have a driver for this but I found that with these seals the fastest most easiest way to get this thing in square is just a block of wood the driver I don't know for some reason the seal doesn't I don't like how it goes in sometimes it goes in uneven so let's use a block of wood for this okay let me get that wood Make sure it's nice and square. Kind of straight in this thing. Okay. I'm gonna pound this guy in. doing is I'm just I'm, I'm pounding a couple times and I'm checking and I'm pounding I'm checking because I don't want this thing to go and crooked at an angle or anything so because otherwise you're gonna have to yank the seal out and you put a new seal on so this thing should be flush which it is it's 
pretty flush. Okay. And then what I like to do is I'm gonna fill this cavity with some grease. And that's less greasing I gotta do, less pressure. I'll show you what kind of grease I'm using after. Okay. Okay, so. Now we're gonna put on the inside race. Okay, so this is our inner race. Make sure the fat part with the lip goes in. It's like a cup going towards the center. So same thing. I have a driver for this, um, but to start it, I use the wood. Okay. Okay, now that it's flush, I can't go anymore with the wood, then I'm gonna use my driver. So let me change, change sizes. This is the driver size for the outer cup. Okay, make sure that's nice and square. It's going in, looks pretty square to me. I might have hit the bottom already. Let's check. It looks like it. Yep. Looks like I hit the lip. and give it a couple more just to make sure. Yep. Okay. So that's seated. So we got our race seated there. Now we've got to lube this bearing. Then we can put it all together. Same thing, I'm gonna put the grease on my hand here. Okay. Same thing, we're gonna rake it to it pushes through. So you can kind of see it start pushing through at the top. Let me get this kind of excess. I'll go around one more time with the excess. Okay, we are set. Grease, drop that in there. Okay. Because this is a stainless, a little bit of grease on here, especially the threads. You 
can even use anti-seize but I'm using the grease more so to protect from the um, sort of the electrolysis of the stainless steel and the um, I'll wipe that clean after and the uh, galvanized rim okay clean pair of gloves so we're going to take our washer and we're going to throw this back on and center it and set the castle nut with our gloves Shoot some grease inside. Okay, and then we'll fill the rest once it's on top. seal I want to make sure that's clean so that way if there's any leak or failure I can see it okay make sure that bearing is on there good I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna kind of slowly kinda push Get that inner seal up. Okay. Now I'm gonna wipe that back in. I want to make sure that's nice and clean. That way, if I have any seal failure, I'll know. Okay, next thing is we got our washer on, we got our two bearings. Yeah. Let's make sure this is centered good. Now we're going to put the castle nut on and cotter pin and then grease up the grease nipple to fill the cavity. Okay, so we got our castle nut here, cleaned it all off, looks nice and clean, doesn't need a new one. Thread that on carefully. Make sure you put your washer on there now. You don't want to go ahead and do all this and you don't have your washer on. Always important to start this by hand to make sure you don't cross thread. Okay, getting pliers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this thing down all the way. And what you're doing is you're making the thing super tight. That way it sits, it seats that inner bearing, pushes it into the race. Okay. Okay. There shouldn't be any play. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna back it off a little and put the tire on. We're gonna back it off. I'm gonna get a new cotter pin. We don't wanna reuse those old ones, they're all buff. I got a brand new cotter pin. Okay, uh, and we're gonna put the tire on and then grease it.
when you have your tire off, it's a good time to inspect your tire. Look for any nails, check the wear, check the threads. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and put a little bit of grease on there. My rims are a little dirty, dirty. They're kind of black, but what that is is that's just grease. Gonna make sure my lug nuts don't get stuck and seized up on there. Okay, I'm gonna tighten the lug nuts down. Like I mentioned earlier before, keep in mind which way your lug nuts go. So my lug nuts, it's uh. You know, they, they taper in, that's the side that goes in. Start these by hand, that way you don't cross thread them, you don't have to buy a new hub. Sometimes people, like you go to shops and they use the impact wrench, impact gun, and they strip your stuff. And then I'm gonna go and wipe this all down after. snugging it up so that way we can test the play of the tire and see how it spins with the before we set the castle nut with a cotter pin once the tires on the ground that's when you really tighten it up tire back and forth make sure we don't got play we're gonna spin it feels like it's rubbing a little so we're gonna back off the castle nut a little bit pretty good. I don't feel any play there and it's spinning. Doesn't feel like it's binding. I'm gonna look for the uh, cotter pin hole.
tightened it all the way down to set the bearing, the outer bearing, and then wiggle the tire back and forth, make sure there's no play, and then back it off a little so you get where you want to be. Okay, that doesn't feel like any play, so we're going to set the cotter pin right there. Gonna put it in. Tap that bugger. Pull this thing out a little. Okay. Bend this thing up. Out of the way. Some guys like to snip them. You know, they. Cut that thing. Make it a little shorter. You can do that too. Some guys cut them even shorter than that. Okay, it's quiet, seems smooth, and I don't have any play. So now last thing we're going to do is grease this bugger. Uh, this is what they call the easy lube system. So what it is, is you, there's a grease nipple here and then there's a port on the inside towards the back of the spindle. And what happens is, is the grease gets pushed from the back and then it fills and you know you've greased it all the way when the grease starts coming out the front. Just go slow when you do these because what you don't want to happen is you don't want the grease to blow the seal out on the rear. So if you go too fast, you got too much in there, sometimes you can have pressure and you can blow the real se rear seal. So just go slow. And when you see just the grease start to ooze out to the castle nut and then just stop. So like I said, you don't want to force it. Once this is done, uh, I'm just gonna pound the dust cap back on, lower the tire and uh, torque up those uh, Lug nuts. Okay, so I can see the grease start to ooze out. A little bit till I get to that castle nut. Okay. There you go. So let's fully greased. Take this thing off here. And last but not least is the dust cap. So we got our cotter pin, make sure the cotter pin is not in the way of anything, and it's not. And let's put that dust cap on. So we got a new dust cap. And what I like to do with these is I like to use that little tool that I got to install them. Just like that. Just make sure it's nice and square when you got it. Make sure it's seated all the way around. That's it. All done. Now if you don't have that tool, you can use like a block of wood and just tap at it. You just gotta make sure you're doing it evenly. Spin the tire, tap it, you know. Just make sure it goes on even. And then last thing you wanna do is clean up any excess grease. So that way if there's a grease um, failure, like the seal fails or something, you'll see it. Yeah. 
Um, and then once everything is all torqued up and I do all the wheels and tires, then uh, I usually uh, drive around for a couple of miles, make sure there's no issues, just give it a test drive. And that's it. Okay. Okay, so I did the, the rears. The rear is only hub only. My front is brakes. So I took the caliper off already. And this is my rotor slash hub. So to do these, it's basically the same thing. Um, my brake set, I've got Kodiak stainless calipers, but the brake uh, rotor hub isn't stainless. It's, so they call it Dacker mat, but it still rusts. But the uh, slide bolt, and the uh, calipers are stainless. So to take this off, there's these two slide slide bolts or slide pins. They're in the back. It takes an Allen wrench or a socket. Uh, socket size is half inch. So you just take those off, remove the caliper, place it on the ground. You can inspect your brake pads, see how much meat you got. I still got a lot of meat, so um, yeah, that's it. And um, it's basically the same thing uh, like the like I did on the rear. Um, take off the castle nut, remove the races and bearings, install the new ones, clean it up, install the new ones, install the new seal, put it back on, and then we just put the brakes back on. So that's the only difference, um, is just, um, you just remove the brakes and put it down on the ground. That's it.